Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how CPAP really works in the CHF patient. What's really going on because there's some misconceptions out there. Now to help illustrate this, I'm going to use this BAS right here. And first we have to talk about how people breathe. Now let's identify some of the parts of the syringe as they apply to our anatomy for this illustration. So the hole up here at the top of the syringe is the hole in the middle of your face. That's your airway. This would be your lungs right here. And the plunger portion would be your diaphragm. Now when people breathe, take air in and out of the body, it's mostly through contracture of the diaphragm. So the diaphragm drops down and like a vacuum you suck air in under negative pressure. We breathe in under negative pressure. Now let's think about this for a moment. When that plunger falls down, which way do the sides of the syringe up here want to go? Up in the chest. Which way do they want to move? They want to move inward, right? If I pull the syringe down tight, this wants to move inward. That's exactly what happens in the human body. And when that happens, it compresses the low pressure vena cava. So every time you inhale, you're compressing that vena cava and you're helping supply some preload, some blood return to the heart. That's exactly what happens. In fact, we call that the respiratory pump. So every time the diaphragm drops down, it squeezes in a little bit, compresses the vena cava, and helps to return blood to the heart. Cool. Now, let's say, for example, instead of the diaphragm working, we just blasted air into the top of this hole and we pushed the diaphragm down. Which way would the sides go then? Well, they would go outward. They're not compressing on the vena cava. So if we're just blasting air into somebody, sides want to go out, we're not compressing the vena cava. So we lose that amount of preload. We've lost our respiratory pump. But when would we ever just blast air into somebody ridiculous like that? Doesn't make any sense. That would never happen. What? Positive pressure ventilation reduces the respiratory pump? reduces preload and drops your blood pressure? Yeah, that's exactly what happens every time you're bagging somebody. Jeez, I wish there was a way we could help return some of that negative pressure and utilize the respiratory pump. Yeah, this is the rescue pod. That's exactly what this device does. It helps to return some of that negative pressure so we can utilize the respiratory pump. Helps to compress the vena cava, helps to improve preload. Okay, so let's think about another scenario. Let's say that when the diaphragm drops down and creates that negative pressure, at the same time, we put air into the patient under positive pressure to negate that, to equal that pressure so that the sides aren't coming in, it's not compressing the vena cava, and we're reducing preload to the heart. That's what CPAP does. That's exactly the mechanism we're looking for in CPAP, to negate that negative pressure Take the pressure off the vena cava, wipe out the respiratory pump, and reduce preload to the heart during CHF so the heart can play catch up a little bit. Now, when it comes to compliance with CPAP, it's not usually the inspiratory phase that's bugging the patient, it's the exhalation when they're exhaling. Think about it, CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. And let's say we put it at 10 centimeters of water pressure, right? So when the patient inhales, they're negating that pressure, they get all that pressure coming in, feels great. The problem is they can't exhale against it. So I have a tip in the field for patient compliance, if your patient is able to do this. Because what's more beneficial, the inspiratory phase or when they're exhaling? The inspiratory phase, we're trying to wipe out that pump, right? Here's what you do. If the patient's able, give them the mask. Give them control of the mask. Have them hold the mask on their face and get a good seal during the inspiratory phase. But if they're having trouble exhaling around that pressure, have them crack the mask a little bit so they're allowed to exhale. That's what it is, they just can't exhale. It's very uncomfortable. It's hard to breathe against 10 centimeters of water pressure. Try that, and then as they get used to it, you'll get better compliance. Now, how do you know it's working? Their respiratory rate starts to come down, SATs improve, end tidal improves if you have end tidal on at the same time, which you should. So the patient gets better. Another technique, now always follow your local protocol, but maybe start the CPAP at a lower level and gradually rise it up so we can get compliance as opposed to strapping this thing on this patient's head and watching him wrestle with it. You know, I wish there was a way that we could have a lot of pressure on the way in but less pressure on the way out so the patient can exhale and feel more comfortable. We do. That's called BiPAP. 
and we use that in the hospital by level ventilation so they get more pressure on the way in to wipe out that pump reduce preload to the heart but when the patient exhales the machine automatically lessens the pressure so it's easier for the patient to exhale and you get better patient compliance okay so this has been just a quick review of how CPAP really works my name is Mark thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video